So in a new viral video, the terrorists who abducted over 60 passengers of the Kaduna, the Abuja Kaduna train on 28th of March, threatened to abduct and kill the President Buhari and Governor Kaduna State, Malam Nasir El Rufai. The terrorists also boasted that they would destroy the country, kill the remaining passengers in their custody, and sell out the others. In the video, we also saw them flogging the, 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 the people, abductees. That, that, the abductees with them. And we saw the women crying and the children crying. And we saw the aggression that these Nigerians were on, we had, had to go through on the hands of these um, terrorists. And obviously, it brings back again the conversation on insecurity. What has been done, what is being done, and what's going to happen, especially in line with this new video. Um, obviously, there's a bit of frustration on the parts of the terrorists because they're not getting what they want. The government has since responded and said that this is not, this is not unusual in cases like this, where um, terrorists will try to um, be more aggressive to their victims because they want to force the hand of the, of the government. That the security, um, the commander in chief is doing everything he can to get back this, the, 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 the people's loved ones who have been abducted. And we can say that we've heard this before. They said that they can't do a carpet bombing because it's to affect the victims, you know. So they're telling us that it's the easiest thing to do is to bomb the whole place. But because we also have victims there, it's difficult to do. So when your government is also complaining that their hands are tied almost, you're thinking to yourself, so what's going to happen? What are your thoughts on this? This is the confusion Nigerians are discussing this morning. You can call us on 081-270-53687-0913907694. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. I know this is just going to be lamentation because we can't solve yeah. any problem on this table. But I think it's, an, it's important for Nigerians, especially our leaders who watch our show, to understand the, the hearts of what our people are going through, what families are going through, and... Maybe they can help, to, can help them understand that they need to make, take more drastic measures. What are your thoughts when you saw these videos? I know you're just, Mariam hasn't been able to watch the video no. because it was just an emotional. <laughs> it took me a while. I saw the video a few times, I didn't touch it. But when I now knew you were talking about it, I had to force myself to watch it. So, eh, Nima, your the thoughts? The only provoking thing for me is seeing those children, you know, being put through that and, and it's not provoking the reaction. So, just as you said, we will rant because we don't know what to do. But we don't expect government to not to know what to do. You are in charge of the security agencies. You have a, a, a DSS for your intelligence and, you know, uh, secret uh, missions. You have, you have the means. You know, you cannot be helpless like us. We can only watch this video and feel sorry for the families. But 43 people, and let's not forget, some people died on that train. Some well, young doctor died. Um, some people died, you know. And these are families who are just going to see their loved ones and all of them are still there. Only 20 people, I think, have been released. You have about 40-something people left. And it does, it's, not, it's not encouraging for government to look at it as something that, you know, they cannot do. This has happened since March. The families accused federal government in one of the stories that they also want to... They don't want to be helpless. So they want to help themselves instead of paying ransom and getting their families out. And the federal government, according to them, scuttled this effort to allow them help themselves. And government is not reassuring by saying, no, we don't want to carpet them. What exactly would you do? Why have you not done it for this long? Yeah. And one thing that government does, which, which they did in the Dabchi Girls um, uh, School, was go and get a foreign somebody to come and negotiate. This, they know themselves, encourages the terrorists. So there must be a time where our military strength, our security agents, our strength as a nation, our sovereignty as a nation is used to mm. get uh, kidnappers yeah. out. Ma'am, your thoughts can trust government with, with, with this development? What, what do you... Really sad situation. And for me, I just don't want to come and rant our usual ranting. Because then what? They're still in captivity and they're still... And we're still not, you know, able to do anything. But it just... It just makes it clear that definitely our, our country does not have the... Intelligence, the personnel, the wherewithal to protect the citizens is just clear. Um, when we hear of Americans saving their people, is when 
they kidnap them and take them outside their country. They find a way to even get them outside their country. But to have it being done within our country and we're unable to help people, it just shows how weak we are. And it's time to tell ourselves the truth. The government needs to look for help outside to save Nigerians. Right now, militarily, I don't think we have... We, we are, I don't think we can do this. I think we're overwhelmed, and it's time to just tell Nigerians the truth. But it scares me for the rest of us, because it is just... Mm. You just never know right. who the next person will be. You just never know. In the papers, we couldn't take it, but um, they said the federal government colleges have been asked... They've asked their children to leave school immediately. They just shut them down um, abruptly because they had heard stories about some gunshots or some threats. So everybody is living in fear. Someone goes out, you know, you call somebody and the person doesn't pick immediately. Your, your, your yeah. chest, you know, is in your mouth. You're, mm -hmm. you're wondering what's happening. It's just a seriously scary situation. Right. And I tell you, there's nothing I've heard that the presidency has said that is different, that gives me hope. Yeah. And I really didn't want to make that today about just lamenting, but it's just really, the sad reality. Yes. What are your thoughts on this? Um, so, I agree that it, we must... Uh, Nima, like we've, the, the security apparatus of Nigeria has failed. Um, it's not today. Maybe when Chibok happened, we felt somehow that they were going to be able to rescue them. When we couldn't rescue them, when the, um, the Dapchi, the boys... We've had several of such attacks that it's obvious that we cannot protect our within our, our sovereignty. So there's no need to be belaboring that. But we can have a conversation about how the government responds. You know, I'm tired of hearing these things also happen in other countries. It's very insensitive. Because if it is your own child that is being kidnapped and being lashed on, recorded, being beaten, you would not say this thing also happens in other countries. No, it's not. There are things you don't see. There's a posture that you will carry as a leader that will make me know that you understand what we're feeling. Even if you don't have anything to do, at least let, let there be a level of compassion and communication consistently because you understand that I don't know what to do. I am trying my best. Yeah. The security, and, and let us communicate with that from that place of compassion, communicate from that place of understanding. So wait, do, you, do you realize that? Toba, Lowo, Wanora, that's a, like Yoruba, I, I cannot spend money on you, but I would spend my time. I will right. give you what I have. In constant communication with these people that are, their family members left alone, we hear stories that their family members are not checked upon or that we didn't hear anything from anybody. We don't but know what's the, going on. I'm going to argue now that these guys are also threatening the president. I mean, this is a oh, threat. This is, a national, this is practically the commander in chief of our armed forces is being threatened. They say they're going to bring Buari here mm. and El Rufai. That's another part of the conversation. So the audacity for a terrorist to say, who is Buari? I will bring you here. I mean, they saved their people from the Kuje prison. So what else? What can you hold them to? So you know how you are fighting with a younger person, and the person now comes and does your head like, do your worst. That's what they've done. It's just, it's really scary for so me. It's if teaching we, time, season if, if, we, if we do that, if we, if we have that conversation, the fact that they have the, the audacity to threaten our president, and this is coming to the elections. You probably recall, when, before APC came in, PDP was going through something not this bad, where it was the Chibok girls, and mm. it was a major thing that caused PDP the elections. Mm. Everybody was going on about Chibok. This is a major issue. This is worse. And it's like, for APC to even think that this is something that, that, that they don't, they, 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 if they feel they can't, they should not address this issue. Before 2023, they, 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 somebody has to go back to the drawing board. Mm. Because this is a major problem. This is a deal breaker for these, Nigerians. These pictures, these pictures you're seeing, is not a, it's not a joke. So, Mariah, we're living in daily trauma. Like, every Absolutely. Nigerians are living in daily trauma. You are driving in traffic, you see somebody behind you, yeah. you start shaking. You get a phone call, I hope everybody is safe where you are. I hope, like, there's a daily traumatic experience of living in this country. And it seems like our politicians don't understand. So we are having conversations and people are, people are discussing things that are not the real issues. We're talking about financial crisis. We're spending more money servicing debt that we are earning. It's not that you are spending money on infrastructure. You are servicing debt with more than what you are earning. Economic crisis on ground, insecurity on ground, food inflation on ground. And then we are arguing on non-issues. Okay, so so when it comes, let's, to let's go on a quick break.
When we come back, we'll open our phone lines and have um, hear from our viewers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. You know, during the break, we're talking about Nigerian issues, you know, and it's always when it, when it come, when, in, in, in places where Nigeria is like the government is um, is clearly the one at fault. Mm. We all come out and say and condemn because this one there's no there's no other person. Mm. But the truth is that well, what else could have been done in your own view as a citizen? Yes, um, our armed forces are overwhelmed. Intelligence or gathering is poor because for some reason they can't detect where these people are. Even if they know the, where they are, why have, not been able, why have they not been able to invade and capture these people? This shouldn't be such a hard thing. If you, just like Miriam reminded us, even the U.S. government came to our country, to our own, to our own country, to, to become their, their own citizen in the bushes. That we can so access. can we engage those same people that came to carry their citizens? Come and help us get this our own citizens too. We'll pay you and for that. You know, this is it, just it's so painful. You know, because when I saw those women crying, there was a woman, I, I didn't hear what she was saying in the house, but she was obviously lashing out from me at the federal government that they had to come and answer these people. I don't know what she said, but I'm just assuming she's, she's lamenting and shouting and telling the government to come to their rescue. So probably she's afraid that it will cost her life. I don't want to believe that our military are not capable, that our security system apparatus has collapsed completely, like Tokwe said. I don't want to believe that because he works when he has to work. The president's <laughs> team fought back bandits' attack. Mm -hmm. Even if the terrorists got bored and shot at his vehicle, they shot back. So I don't want to believe. I think there's a will issue here. Mm. A, a, an important part of, I will not allow this happen to my people. Mm. I will not, I will be president over everybody. And it cannot be a Nigerian's life that will be treated or taken with that levity. Remember the farmers when the terrorists went into a farm and they just kept wiped shooting, out. wiped out an entire you know, clan. And then this, there was this um, three um, UN workers that were picked up mm. and they did a video where they just... Those execution, are things that... Execution. Execution. That, those are some of the things that provokes a person to say, I'm the leader of this nation, not under my word. You don't have a people you know, to lead. No, but you're not lead. You're not paid. Whenever it happens, you just, you know, um, you know it happens... And we condemn Other it. Other countries too. You know, I've commanded the, uh, 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 the whatever, yeah, giving them, giving them a, a shoot at sight. Her, shoot at sight. You know, you just Ultimatum. saw. Ultimatum. Those are the so words. So I don't them. believe. I know that Nigerians are the people who make up this army, but we know we've seen where a uh, chief of army staff before the uh, the late chief of army staff passed. We saw things improve. We know that somebody needs to motivate yeah. these people. President, people who, need to Nima, motivate. A president who told us with his own mouth. Now he's tired. Mm -hmm. Like he can't wait for the next few months just so that he can hand over. He should hand over now. So he, he says he's tired. Now, so now. If he was the commander in chief oh, on the armed forces, so. he's it's telling us that. Ah, like this, I'm tired of the situation. He can like hand over sad. now. You know how the you don't pride have to wait of to saying the, yes. yes that you know what, that my I cannot handle this thing, but I think my vice president is going to You step down. And you step down and you let someone that will be sitting and drinking the problems every day. Your name will be in the in our books for life. Yes. Muhammad Obuari said, after some times, you know what, he stepped down and handed over to his vice president. security issues and Yes. That, for me, carries so much weight that forever, exactly. the history books will forever remember you. And, and, you, and you make a good point because he may be looking at it that I'm almost gone, but the truth is that every it's life is... Every yes, single day. Every 24 hours is important right now. Mm -hmm. And if someone cannot handle that office, he will be doing us a great good and himself also and his legacy if he steps down. Absolutely. But, you see, I just don't... I just hate lamenting. Mm. constantly talking about something over and over again and then mm -hmm. nothing happens. I just really would like, you know, mm. that someone can give us, you know, things that we need to do. Mm. Sacrifices we even need to make for this to come, to, um, to be possible. You talked about politicians. For well, me... Let me pause you for a okay. second, please. Let me, let me take this. We're holding for a while. Ayo from Chesterfield. Good morning. Are you there? Um, I'm here. Good morning, guys. You're live. Go ahead. Here. All right, thank you. Um, before I just draw my point, I just want to speak to Nima quickly. I've been trying to pass this across since two weeks ago. The dress she wore during that um, summer week that she said she was going to give away. Please, don't give it away. Yeah. It looks really good on you, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to say thank you for Nima. Thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you very much. All right. All right. Um, 
Um, I mean, it's a, it's a sad day in Nigeria. Um, I saw that video yesterday. I lost sleep, to be honest, because um, what did they do wrong? They boarded the train and see what happened to them. I just have two um, things to say that has, give, that has given me encouragement in Nigeria this month. And I'll say those two things, drop my premise on, the, on, the, on that. The first one was the Attorney General that resigned, um, I think three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Yes, there were issues surrounding his resignation, but I saw a honest man who was honest enough to say, you know what, guys, this is a, is a big trouble for me, I'm going. And I think it draws on what you guys were just saying now. I think by this morning, we should have started a resignation. People saying, you know, we can't handle this so thing. Sorry. Service chiefs, people who are today in control of this, they say, you know what, we hands off, we can't handle this. And it's evidence already. It's evidence. Let's not give ourselves that resignation should have started rolling in this morning. That's one. The second thing that encouraged me, and I think seeing that, you know, informed me that we can have a great future, which we are praying to have, as the transparency and communication of the vice president last week. He was ill. He communicated his unit, what he thought it could be, and where he's taking his treatment. Over the weekend, I also... Oh, yeah. I think I was trying to say that. Yes, you know, just little drops of hope. Yeah, yeah yes. but I was saying something about, you know, going forward, the politics, um, general elections that we're looking to, and we, for me, it is completely and simply going to be issue-based. I don't care about anything else. I want to know what your antecedents are. I want to know what your plans are. Not a joke. I, I want to know every single detail. I want to understand. I want to know that you have the understanding of how the country works, the military, how you're going to use it. I don't care where you're from, what you... That's all that's going to be important to me, and I hope that that's what's important to all Nigerians. And if anyone cannot answer these salient questions at this time, because we're a country that is about to implode. Absolutely. And if anybody coming out cannot answer these important questions, and if you can go through your past and say that you have done things that would not would not um, reflect well in our country, in our security, in our finances, in our economy. I don't want, I would have nothing to do with that person. Absolutely. My vote is so important yeah. in 2023. I'll only put it for the right candidate and the candidate has to be someone that understands where we are at and knows the urgency Absolutely. of what we need to do to get out of this. Thank you, Mara. Fast, I mean, I think, I think that, that, that sums it up. Let me take Sam. Sam from Bainway State. Good morning. Are you there? Yeah, good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Murayo, and uh, all the ladies in the house. I'm Sam Otopa from uh, the State, uh, the pastor. Uh, Murayo, I think um, there's something we need to take note of. Not everyone speaking against evil is actually a good person. That the president seems to be speaking against this thing, and the body language seems to be different, does not mean they don't know what is happening. It has come to, a, to, to our notice that this government seems not to be proactive, proactive. And if you are not proactive, you cannot be productive. It's a sign that this government has actually failed this country. That you can hear terrorists telling you that they will come and kidnap your president and kidnap a sitting governor. And then, like uh, our mommy said there, that um, when they shot at the army, the army actually shot back. It's a sign that they are not even proactive. This is a boy of the president, and they are supposed to be aware of everything from maybe 10 mm. kilometers ahead that there are people gathered around here at intending to attack right. the president. So if they could do that to the president, what will happen to the normal citizens? Thank you very much, Sam. I, I, I'm only going to break, but it was important that I mentioned this point before you go on a break. I, I mean, the Maram talked about let us addressing the issues, because there are propagandists around whipping up sentiments. Christian, Muslim, religion, ethnicity. The real it issues, is. those people in those videos are not Christians. At least one, some of them are not Christians. Because see, they are Muslims and they're probably Christians, both mixed, mixed religions in that place. Nigerians are not under attack, not Christians. 
or not Muslims? Because when propagandists come out with all this rhetoric, oh, they want to Islamatize Nigeria, they want to Christianize Nigeria, oh, they're doing this, they did this, they, they refer to the Omo Massacre. Yes, Omo Massacre happened to Christians, but these people who are also being attacked, some of them are non-Christians. So it's a night, it is an attack on us, the people. Oh, nice. We should we should remember these issues when the propagandists come up that to that start painting. It's all about Islamization. It's not about that. It's that Nigerians are under attack. And I hope that these videos, Nigerians are seeing beyond what the propagandists are putting out there for us to, to see. Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. When we discuss insecurity, we always forget one most important com um, component of the, of the army, the soldiers who are out there doing, risking their lives for us. So many of them have also said, because I, saw, I got a message from, from somebody who is a retired soldier that it's easy to condemn, but there are many soldiers that are risking their lives to even try to save some of these people. So we, we understand that. <laughs> but what we're worried is the, the, the strategy that has been employed by the government to get these children back. Just yes, so okay. my... Um, my own perspective of the challenge we're facing, because you asked the question when we came back from the break then, that I was waiting to answer, that what, what else can we do? Because there are many actors in this field. There are, these people, Nigerians or non-Nigerians, are working with Nigerians. They are working based on the information of Nigerians. Yes. They are working in collaboration mm -hmm. with Nigerians. Mm -hmm. They are being fed by Nigerians. They are getting ammunition. They are buying petrol from Nigeria. There is an institution profiting from this industry, this negative, vile industry called banditry, terrorism, kidnapping. And the people that are benefiting from this industry are Nigerians. Yes. They have the information. Yes. They know when they come and buy yes. food. Yes. They know how these things happen. They know how they come out. They know who they send out. And because they are making money from it, they are not talking. Yep. It has not affected them yet. They are not talking. Mm -hmm. But they must start working because the military can only use what they have. And some of us, just because we see these things, we, have, we, we sit down and assume that all the soldiers are so compromised, everybody just fold their hands. They are dying every day too. Almost every time there's an attack, one soldier... One um, person in law enforcement lose their life. They lose their lives every day, too. So we are not saying that. It's not a case of, oh, our village people are not working because they are dying. So do, do, would they want willingly go and die? Would they go out to go and die? So we must realize that all of us, all of us need to be, yeah, we should pray for Nigeria and we must be having that conversation. So when you sit down and you're tweeting, you're messaging, you're insulting, 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 also take time in that your space to creatively ask Nigerians, the chiefs, the service chiefs, the person selling yeah. bread to them. You, you know, there was a man caught that became a millionaire from selling bread Food to, to bandits. It was, yeah. it was, it, it increased capacity. Well, yes. it's the economic situation of a country that will let somebody sell bread to a bandit. No, it's because you're not economically empowered. No, I'm not, I'm not excusing. I I'm not saying that you. because that remember, the, also... remember, the government said yeah, that we, we, we need information. Yes, they, they need the communities. All those ah, that's where they are. We understand that part too. But you see, is that. Well, it's a vicious circle that will continue. Yeah. So the leader is not meant to know the solution, but the leader should inspire yeah, us. Yeah. So is the, a, a, the president can inspire us to say, I might be hungry, but okay. that person is my brother being kidnapped, when and I know say, they are giving them food. I will do my part. When you say the leader does not have to know the solution, you're talking about a, the knowledge of, you know, maybe How? this a security knowledge, mm. but the compassion to say no. Yes. Uh -huh, Let be. me just, even so just to this leader thing. Yeah. Someone has said, because if it's a leader that's coming from a, um, as a, what do they call them now? Civilian. If you're not, a civilian, I can understand. Williams Olajimoke says, if the president, who has a general title, hmm. can't offer strategic help to fight insecurity, I wonder what the service chiefs can do. They keep saying they know what they are, who, uh, where they are and their sponsors, but no result till now. Soldiers managed to capture terrorists and now they escaped. Skipping. So there's an institution, um, just in response to the person that talked about soldiers dying, we understand that and we understand the institution that is, that is putting them at risk. Mm. They're just treating our, the lives of our soldiers as if it's worth nothing. Yeah, it's nice. Do you understand? Yeah, nice. We have... We, we are upset at everything. The structure on ground is not working. We had soldiers at one point where they were almost going to protest because their welfare was just denied them. We have families who would tell us how poorly they've been treated when soldiers have lost their lives at the war front. So we are talking about just 
everything. And we have, whether we like it or not, our present president, his military um, no. background and experience was supposed to put him above and beyond every other person that ran with Absolutely. him when he ran for election. We and we hope that it will come to play today at a time like this. And sadly, here we are. So I met two young soldiers who came on their break to the Ajo military cantonment, and we sat down to talk. And they were trying to explain to me what they go through. And one of them just got frustrated. He took off his clothes, and I saw the injury. Oh, gosh. A bullet wound that passed through that could have cost his life. And he said, Auntie, I treated myself. Oh. In the Northeast, wow. you, before you get between here and the hospital, they, nothing, that they will be there for days, that help will come in days. And that the friends around him, other soldiers had to become and patch this injury themselves. Mm. They know these things. Who is the service chief? Who is in charge of the uh, monetary compensation and all of those payments? Who is in the military barracks? Who is not taking care of the widows of soldiers who have died? And they were blaming other soldiers who will go there and announce... If you go back to town, don't tell the wives of so -so that their husbands have died. They delay the announcement. They know what they do. And a sitting president is someone who will say, I will lead by asking the right questions and saying, questioning the accountant, questioning... Because some people join the military, they become IKEDA top officers. They become millionaires overnight. Mm. They can't explain their wealth. We have, um, we have a few messages. Let's take a few messages before we wrap up on this. Okay, um, Charlie says, this is unacceptable. Please and please, we beg the government... Um, responsible for this. It's not pride. This should be our priority as a nation, not just to save the people, but to save this country. Our children have been at home in the last seven months. We need help. Um, John Terry says, when we interrogate the bandits, they let us know that, that with the support of their father... Okay, sorry, I didn't get that. Um, Samuel yep. Abola yeah. Steven says, I think this shows the incompetency of our security service chiefs and lack of love for the country. Imagine terrorists treating the number one man of the country Threatening. Okay, threatening okay. the number one man of the country anywhere on earth does this happen. I'm not surprised if the government has no hands in we this. We have to wrap up on this, but I think, thank you to Olajumoke for reminding us that our president was a former general. So we expected that he would bring that to, to bear mm. as a president, but unfortunately we haven't seen that play out. Um, our hearts go out to these people. We just hope that somehow they're able to meet the demands of this terrorist or even rescue them. That, that's, that's a better picture. A better. But... Um, but the truth is that Nigerians would continue to make insecurity, put, the, put insecurity on the front burner because that's a deciding factor mm -hmm. in government at this time. That's going to break. When we come back, move on to other segments. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your View will be right back.